Trevor Stringer, the chair of the big school. I'd just like to introduce the forces that shaped our community, which is a heritage grant for three years, which starts in January 2022 until December 2024. It's all to do with the heritage at uh, Craginos. We are getting Welsh translations, so I'm sorry if I'm not very good at uh, <laughs> my pronunciation, but all the signs and everything will be in Welsh as well. It's uh, besides the historical projects, we will have uh, a workshop every week. Uh, we'll be doing uh, fish on the clay fish, uh, clay animals. Uh, we'll be doing painting, lots of recycling projects where you can get a, a credited course, craft room waste, besides dry stone wool and hedge laying uh, accreditation. And you'll find the craft workshops are very social, uh, you make new friends, you'll get new skills and it's all about opening up creativity after what's been pretty unpleasant two years for a lot of people. So it's a great project, you'll love it, there's something for everyone whether you want to do something at home, whether you want to do something sitting down or whether you want to use your hands and get out in the fresh air. So we'll see you around. Yeah, I, th I think the area itself, I mean, you've got Penrith Quarry up there um, it's on our doorstep, really, and the Bridleway comes down from there into the park itself. You've got a lot of historical quarrying gone on on the other side of the valley, and there's evidence of that with a lot of lime kilns still in existence. They're obviously not working, but um, and they'd have been used for making lime for enriching the land. Yeah. And then once the Industrial Revolution came along, people started making lime for building and and, and mortar and things like that. Um, I, I, was, I think it was you told me that uh, this area actually <coughs> kick-started the Industrial Re Revolution. The yeah, I mean, my understanding is, so I'll, I'll say it is, it is my understanding that the um, Estravetta, sort of, the coal industry started down in that, that part yeah. of Wales. Um, and it was from there it spread and then the exports and the industrial revolution that followed really if you sort of break it back it started down in this valley um, in this area so it's a very very important site really wow and do i understand that the coal seam from this area actually goes across the, under the atlantic i believe the, the, the coal seams that uh, run through South Wales area actually do continue under the Atlantic, deep under the Atlantic and reappear in uh, the, the mountains in the United States. So, wow. yeah, so there's some sort of interesting links over there as well. And do you get many visitors coming here who's uh, their forebears used to work in the gardens and here? I think local visitors come in here. I think everyone has um, a, a quite a close relationship to the country park. Um, a lot of it through their relatives who either worked in the TB hospital, were patients in the TB hospital, or you know, beyond that, people that worked for the house and the gardens under Adelina Patti. Um, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of people with a, a, an, an interesting historical relationship to this place and they do like to talk about it and, and be involved. So welcome to the, the duck pond as we know it today where people come and enjoy feeding the, the ducks here at Craigenos Country Park. This pond actually used to be used as a fish stocking lake um, in the days when the, the castle was inhabited um, either for putting on the river yeah. for fishing or to feed people in the castle itself. Rebecca you're going to be uh, facilitating some of the collaborative projects that Big Skill will be running over the next three years up in and around Craigenos. Yeah. Um, perhaps you'd like to talk a little bit about a couple of those? Yes, yeah, there's a number of different things we're hoping to do because there's so many different sites here just within this small area of the park where there's an incredible amount of social history that goes back, some of it, right the way to the Bronze Age. 
and so it's not just industrial revolution stuff there's also modern stuff and a lot of a lot of it's um easy to overlook like i've been coming here to the duck pond for 10 years i had no idea that it was a fish stocking ponds for the castle and that it was actually a part of people's diets it's not just like a a delightful thing that they had here. It was an important part along with the gardens and that kind of thing of raising food. And you think, well, this is something we're all getting really interested in again. And so with the artwork that we're going to do, we want to bring that information forward and describe it and explain it in interesting, fun ways where we learn a lot while we're doing it as well. And one of the reasons I like doing projects of that kind is that it gives a real sense of purpose to the making. So say you volunteer and join into a project where you want to learn how to make ceramic sculpture. What are you going to make? What's it going to be about? Here we have this incredible array of things we're trying to share with the wider public, with tourists, and we'll be making, working together and making sculptures of all sizes, some of them very small, some of them much bigger, that will be um, our way of sharing what we've learned in order to enrich the experience of coming to the country park to show how complicated and interesting it is. Oh, that sounds absolutely wonderful. I know, I'm really Very looking exciting. forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun and we've done a lot of this kind of stuff before so we know what we're doing, we're very focused, we're very efficient about it, people don't have a lot of time to offer. So when you ask for volunteers you can't expect them to give like countless hours, you have to be organized so they can come in and contribute um, what they have to offer, which sometimes they don't even realize they have, and I'll help them find that because that's my job, um, that we can get a lot done in an efficient way so that we leave something behind for the park. And that's for people that we've never met, for visitors of the future, to then enjoy those things as well. So, so it, it's so intense. A legacy project, absolutely. Legacy is the word, that's exactly right. And it's, it's a, a a meaningful way to brag about this area, which is something I'm very fond of doing. I live around here and this area is very special. Well, he, he wrote a bit of that, or he told someone about the ghost in some of these homes. Can you tell us about this area and your plans and what you'd like to see happening for this area well this is this is an interesting spot actually this is this is one of my favorite parts of the country park um behind me you've got the the natural resurgence of water coming out from the cave systems in the mountain behind us um this water feeds the far lake that um was previously used just as a ledger lake really and now again it's just another duck pond really but very beautiful um and we call it the far lake now this place really lends itself to lots of the projects that we've got going on and in mind for this, this whole big scale project. And from the dry stone walling, um, making a feature of this resurgence to the sculptures of animals that inhabit this woodland and this area and this country park. And maybe even you know, a, a sort of a mother nature figure looking after all of this for us. So behind me here you can see a, what currently looks like an area of devastation. It's actually us managing um, some of the plants that have become quite invasive in the country park and rhododendron being one of them. Um, to my right there's, there's a leet along there which sort of controls the drainage of this area and the rhododendron was planted initially as a hedge but over many years has, has become very overgrown. So. We're taking it back to its status as a hedge, which at the moment means clearing it and dealing with it all on site. So it's a big project that's ongoing. We have to be mindful as we do it that we're not making massive habitat changes. Um, it's kind of in keeping with the size of the site and the size of the problem. So that, that, that's some of the work that we're doing here.
This is the pavilion. Um, it was built for Adelina Patti to use for changing, to come out and play croquet and uh, lawn tennis out, out on these lawns here. So we try and manage these as lawns and with the pavilion itself is open for people to use uh, occasionally throughout the year. Um, it was somewhere that she would have used to sit and have tea if it became a little misty like it is today. Um, and in there was one of the first plumbed toilets that wasn't in a main residence you know, <laughs> um, in the area. So an interesting little place actually, yeah. I just want to say first off that I'm really, really pleased to be part of the forces that shape the community's projects from the Big Skill. Um, I've worked with Big Skill for quite some time now and uh, the projects that you do, that you put together, um, are always brilliant and amazing and un get unexpected results and, and mainly just get communities involved and I think that's what we want to do with this particular project. One of the reasons I'm really excited about this uh, and being at Kryginos Castle is that I've never been there before. Wow. And I really like going to forage in places that I have no idea what I'm going to find. Um, does it make me feel slightly nervous? Yes, it does. Does that keep me on my toes as a forager? Yes, it does. Um, so to answer your question, I don't know, and that's why I'm really thrilled about it. I would imagine that given that there's um, a legacy of mining in particular in the area, that we might find plants like Colt's Foot, um, which was often, although it's a wild plant, it was often cultivated um, for the miners to smoke before, you know, they wouldn't have had access to tobacco and um, so any wild plant that you could make a good smoke from would have been quite useful down the mines um, you, you can imagine why because you just basically I think smoking is a communal thing to do and if you don't have tobacco then you look for something you know in the wild that you can smoke and, and Coltsfoot is a really good one of those so um, I used to live just outside Merthyr and when I used to go to the um, if I ever had occasion to go to the um, to the doctors and go to the chemist the chemist still had Colts foot rock in jars there that's not that long ago uh, yeah so so that plant is is uh, it's a plant that was actually soothing to the throat which is why it ended up being made into Colts foot rock that you you may have come across um, I might also see something that used that the common name is uh, gypsy backy which is um, the same plant family as nettles, but is used also as a tobacco. So I'd be looking for some of those things, but I'd also be looking for some of the medicinal plants that I would hope to be finding. Um, and, uh, you know, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of medicinal plants, um, which we pass by on a daily basis and don't even notice them because they're so common. Um, and those are the plants that I get really excited by. The things that we know really well, that we know so well we think they're not important. They're the important plants and they're the plants that would have been most used. I think there's only one way to find out, isn't there? That's great. <laughs> so the thing about Kryginos is where it is, is in a place that's quite mysterious, isn't it? It's got a real kind of numinosity about it. I'm not entirely sure what numinosity means, but it's definitely the right word. Um, and so the creative writing group that we've put together, we're hoping that more people will want to come along and be part of it. Because what we're doing is for the first time ever, compiling all the myths and legends around Kryginos, of which there are, it, you know, it's, ample let's say it's it's rich pickings and no one's ever really looked into it before so the writing group are going to be doing that and hopefully turning that into a book excellent <laughs>
Hello, I'm Julia Harris from The Big Skill. I'm an art tutor living locally in Abercrave. Um, my job today is to paint with children from zero to five, but I will also be running other workshops for young children and, and, and adults alike. Uh, we'll be running them at the Craigenose Country Park, the Welfare Hall in Abercrave, and the Estragon Lights Welfare Hall as well. In addition to that, one of the workshops we'll be running is with an author called Lazarus Carpenter who will be helping you to write your story into a book and then I will help you to illustrate it. So I hope you can come along to some of these events. We would look forward to seeing you. Here we are at Craggy North and it's the launch of our heritage project, The Forces That Shaped the Community. Alan's been taking people around the park doing geology and geography. Adele's been taking people talking to the trees, I think. We've had Rebecca, who's actually making clay tiles for the curvy bench. Julie's doing painting with kids. Uh, we've got Bridget, who's doing her recycled rugs. Uh, we've got the Joseph Herman Association. We've got Karen doing making models of old people. Ancestors is what I meant to say, <laughs> Ancestors, <laughs> and she'll be doing painting with Ancestors. We've got Bridget just turned up now, she'll be doing a rag rug things. And um, there's Nigel as well, he's doing interviews on Remember Your Ancestors for when the park was owned by Adelina Patti uh, and the ancestors of the miners and the quarry workers and the kiln, work kiln workers. So we've got workshops on every single week now until the end of the year so come and join us it's a fabulous place Cycling old bottles and plastic containers to make character dolls. It's a very fun way as well if you're looking into your ancestry you can use photographs of your relatives even of yourself to make these characters and it's also a good way of using scraps of material, old clothes, anything like that to make these character dolls. It's called Kraginos, the forces that shape our communities.